Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I suppose I should start this video with a short story. A few years ago now, um, I opened a puzzle in a live on screen during a video, um, which had only two given digits in it. And it was a miracle Sudoku. It was the first miracle Sudoku uh, by a constructor called Mitchell Lee. Um, and since then, occasionally we have showcased other miracle Sudokus on the channel. Sudokus that really don't seem to have very much in them at all. And they, they, they appear to be ludicrously impossible. And today we've got another one. This is called 159 Miracle. It's by James Sinclair, a constructor I admire hugely. And I think that admiration is only going to rise because this puzzle, which you can see has almost nothing in it. It has a very short rule set. And we are assured by the boatloads of you who've recommended this to us over the last three days that this puzzle is easy. It, it practically fills itself in, was one comment. Um, yeah, two stars out of five for difficulty on Logic Masters Germany. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to try it. I mean, it, it, it's just, it's so startling when constructors discover. I think, I think it is almost a discovery when you get such sparse grids, um, it's like this puzzle existed in nature and just had to be uncovered. And, you know, the constructor has managed to, you know, like, like a careful archaeologist or a paleontologist, extract this beautiful skeleton out of, out of pure rock. Um, anyway, this is what we're going to have a go at. I will read you the rules in a moment or two's time. And I don't think I've got much to tell you about today. Let me think. Um, just a recommendation go over to patreon if you're a patron of the channel and do check out riff clowns uh, sudoku hunt over there the comments and the feedback on that 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 hunt have been absolutely brilliant um so it's well worth your time and you've still got 10 days left to be in with a chance to win the competition and then i've got three birthdays to do today so why don't we start off and say a very happy birthday to hamish who has turned 17 today and I know this because your friend Arlo wrote to us, Hamish, and said that you might appreciate a shout out. And Arlo revealed that you are getting chocolate cake today. So Hamish, happy days and many happy returns. Um, next, we'll turn our attention to Mitchell, who is turning the big 3-0 today. And I know this because your wife Alyssa wrote to us. And Alyssa also let slip, Mitchell, that you might not watch this video today because you apparently you're celebrating your 30th birthday on a Caribbean cruise. Do they have, do they have internet on cruise? I've got no idea. They, they probably do, don't they? Yes, yeah, so you might be able to watch. So you might be getting this message today. I don't know. But Alyssa thought that if, if, if I did wish you a happy birthday, it would make her the best wife ever. So I, I, I hope that's true. And, and she sent a lovely picture, actually. Um, let me see. Where's that? Here we go. So this is, uh, your beautiful daughter and the two of you and Mitchell, many happy returns. Um, next, Robert. Robert, it's your birthday today. And I know this because your son Gavin wrote to us and asked, asked to give you a shout out from uh, Carrie, Gavin and Ali. I think Carrie is your wife. You will know that. But 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 the viewers don't know that. That's, so I have to give it some context. Carrie, um, uh, your wife, Gavin and Ali, I think, are your children. Um, and Gavin did let slip, Robert, that you are a truly great dad. So I hope you like to hear that today. Many happy returns. I hope you have chocolate cake, and I hope that that chocolate cake has more icing than cake. You, you cannot get many better presents than that. And with all that said and done, let us turn our attention to what James Sinclair has unearthed from the bedrock um, in, in his 159 miracle. Uh, these are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we have to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box. Digits in column one indicate the column in which the digit one appears in that row. So what does that mean? It can, can be a bit hard to get your head around, but it's fairly simple. Imagine this was an eight. Because it's in this column, it's telling us where the one goes in, in this row. So this is saying that the one in this row goes in the eighth column. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that has to be a one. If this square was a six, 
then this this square would have to be a one because the one needs to be placed in the sixth column. So it's a it's a this indexing idea um, that uh, many programmers apparently immediately can sort of intuit. Um, for those those of us who are not computer programmers, sometimes it's harder. Anyway, what does this column tell us? Well, it's exactly the same rule, but for the digit five. So if this square was an eight, that's saying put the five in this row in the eighth column. So we put the five there. If this square was a two, that would be saying put the five here in the second column. And then the final column is is the nine. So this is why these red stripe rules are sometimes called one five nine rules. So these red digits are telling us in which column the nine goes in the respective row. So if this square was a six, that would be saying put nine in the sixth column. If this square is a two, put nine in the second column. As simple as that. Um, there's virtually no more rules. Digits in cells with a shaded square must be even. So these are even and these are even. And cells separated by a knight's move in chess cannot contain the same digit. So imagine we can't put one in the central cell because it's got to be even. Let's put a two here. Now, if that was a chess knight, it could jump to all of those squares. So none of these squares is allowed to be a two in this in this example, because obviously if they are a two, these would be one single chess move, knight's move uh, apart. And that is too naughty for words. And it will mean you get the puzzle wrong. And that is it. Apparently, just those rules mean that this puzzle is you could, it practically fills itself in. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I suspect I'm going to have to avail myself of a trick I know about 159 puzzles. Don't worry, I will explain that in a moment. But obviously, there are only four even digits in Sudoku. The digits 2, 4, 6 and 8. So these have got to be the digits 2, 4, 6 and 8. And and I can see that allows me to use my trick. So I'm going to I'm going to explain the trick. And I didn't know this when I when we first did a 159 puzzle on the channel. And maybe even when he maybe even the second time I did a 159 puzzle, I didn't know the trick. And it makes these puzzles so much harder. Um, but the trick is, to, is to think about entropy. And what do I mean by entropy? I, I mean, uh, let's look at these three squares, actually. One of these digits definitely has to be a low digit. So oh, when I say low, I mean a one, two or a three. One of them definitely has to be a medium digit and one of them has to be a high digit. And that's forced by these one, five, nine rules. And the way to understand that is to imagine, imagine there were two high digits in this, this sequence. So we'll make that seven and that nine. Can this ever work? And the answer is no, because this this is telling us to put the one in the seventh column, and this is telling us to put the nine the one in the ninth column, and we're definitely going to get two ones in this box if we do that. So you can see that what we have to to, to ensure that we don't get a repeated one in either this box, this box, or this box, we're going to have to separate these digits. One one can be a one, two, or a three, and that's going to index the one in this box. One can be a four, five, six, and that's going to index the one into this box. And then one can be a seven, eight, nine, and that's going to in index the one into this box. And it'll keep them all separate. Now, let's think about these digits and think how that might work then. So the thing I'm seeing immediately is, can there be a four and a six in these three squares? And the answer is no, because again, if there's a four here and a six here, this is saying put one here. That six is saying put one there. We're going to get two ones in box five. That will not work. So in fact, what we've got to do is make sure that there's only one of four and six in this triple. And that means this digit is four or six. And that's telling us that the one in this row is either in the fourth column or the sixth column. And what's that doing? anything? Yes, in fact it is, isn't it? Be because we can use knight's move jiggery pokery now, because that digit now can't be four or six. Because if this digit is four or six and we put a one in one of those two squares as well, this pattern cannot mute, it cannot exist in a knight's move Sudoku. And the way to see that is, well imagine this square here was a one. 
then could either of these be a one now? No, because a one here knocks this one out by Sudoku and knocks that one out by Knight's Move Sudoku. So we can't put a one in either of these squares. So this square cannot be four or six. That is beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. So now, well, what I was going to say is I don't want to make the pencil mark, but it's saying that the one is either in the second column or the eighth column. So one of those squares has to be the one in row six. Um, okay, and we could... Right, well, well we, know, we know that in this column, the two is in one of those squares, don't we? So that's telling us one has to be in one of these three squares. We know that eight is in one of these three squares. So that's telling us one has to be in one of those squares. And the other one is four or six, which is in one of these two squares. And that is not going to work in row five. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful logic. Good grief. Okay, so, okay, so now let's ask, can this be four or six? Because that seems to be a very good question. And that's because if this is four, for example, that says put one in the fourth column. But now none of those can be one because of, because of the knight's move constraint. That simply will not work. You can't put one in the same row as itself and you can't put it a knight's move away from itself. So you cannot put one there. You cannot put one there because that's going to break this pencil mark. Ah, oh, that's so... So actually, what, what, do, what do we actually get from that? Do we get a digit or do we just get a pen? Well, we get, we get that this can't be four or six. So this is now not able to be two or eight because we've got a two eight pair in the column. So this is not, these are not the positions of ones. In this row, the one is in one of those two squares. Um, and we are going to get a digit, but not where I thought we were going to get it. We're going to get it in column five now because where is the one in column five? Well, it's not in those three. It's not even. And it's not there, because if we put a one here, you can't put a one in either of those squares now because of the knight's move constraint. Oh, this is just, this is gorgeous. So that's one. That's indexing the five, isn't it? So now it's telling us put five in the first column. Yes, and you often get this in this 159, um, in these 159 puzzles. You get sort of logic that can go backwards. Because the way I, the way I interpreted the one here was as indexing the five in this row. But of course, the moment I put a one here, what I could have done is said, ah, well now I know this digit because this digit is indexing the one in this row. So this one and five are sort of mutually dependent on one another. And I'm not actually sure well, hang on. Well, I know what that did. I don't know what that digit is, but I've got exactly the same um, principles that applied in this column must apply to these digits, mustn't they? There cannot be a four and a six in these squares because that's going to put two fives in box five. So that digit is four or six, which means we have to put five in one of these two squares in this row, which means five in row two now by Sudoku is in one of those squares. So this square is seven, eight or nine. It's not eight. That can't be eight because we, we know the eight is down here, don't we? So that can't be five because that would be the eighth column. Yeah, OK, so. So it's the same. I think it's the same point again. I don't know if it's going to do anything, but if we if we think about these digits, we know for sure these digits include two and include eight. So that's saying that one of these must be a five, one of these must be a five, and this can't be a five because that would knock five out entirely of box three. That gives us a one five pair in box six. And if that can't be five, that's saying this can't be eight, isn't it? So we can take eight out of that square Oh, no, it's better. It's much better. It's the same point. It's the same point, but just just with a different digit. This digit 
What would happen if this was 4 or 6? That would say put 5 in the row into one of those two squares. Well, that can't be right. If, if one of these is 5, you can't put 5 into those squares, can you? So, ah, uh, this is... Right, so this is 2. It's just a given 2. Well, not maybe given. We've earned it, but it, it wasn't monstrous for us to get it. So this, this is saying put 5 here. That 5 sees that by knight's move Sudoku. So this becomes a 5. That's in the 6th column. These, these lose the ability to be 6. So these are a 4-8 pair. So one of... Oh, this is lovely. Yeah, look. One of these is a 4. So one of these is, is the 5. Because we've got to, because one of these is a four, we've got to put a five in the fourth column in in this box, and that's a knight's move away from this one. So we have to put it here. That's a four. That's an eight. That's telling us this is a five. So we've got to put the five in the eighth column. That's a one. That's telling us this is an eight because the one is now in the eighth column. That's a two. So that's a one. This one sees this digit, so we can get rid of that. That's got to be a one. That's in the sixth column. That's a four, so that's a one. Oh, this is just ridiculous. It, it, it is almost filling itself in. This is absurd. Where's four? In box four. This four sees those two squares and that one by knight's move, so that's a four. Where's four in row five? It's not a knight's move away from itself, so that's four. That's indexing nine in this row, so that nine has to be in the fourth column. Where's 9 in box 4? It's not there by Sudoku. It's not there by Knight's Move. So that's 9. This is magnificent. It's absolutely magnificent. What do I need in this box then? Three, 3 and 7 I want to say. I don't actually have any 3s or 7s in the grid at all. Um... The other thing... Oh... The other thing I typically do with 159 puzzles is that I, there will be a moment in the puzzle where I suddenly get to go quickly and then I won't pick up all of the implications of what we've just done. The result of which will be dreadful, dreadful oversights later. Ah, although where is six in box five? It's not there by Sudoku and it's not there by Knight's move from this six. So there's a six here. So that's a six in this row. So we get a three seven pair left to place in box five. And I'm desperately trying to see if that's actually resolved or not. I don't, uh, I mean, obviously if that's a seven, it would be resolved. Uh, okay, what I might do now though is look at column 5 a bit more closely because we've not put 3 or 5 in this column at all. We know 3 and 5 are down here, don't we? So that's right, I see what that's doing. So now, where is, well, whichever one of these is 3 is saying plonk a 5 into column 3. So one of these is a 5. But that's, that, that's quite cool for that digit and that digit neither of these two digits now can be a five because if we put five here we're wiping five out of all three of those because of the knight's move constraint so that's not five and by exactly the same token this isn't five because if that's a five it knocks those two out now so five is now x-winged in boxes seven and eight which means the five in row eight now look can't go there can't go there can't oh it's there in fact it can't go here because if we put five there it sees both of those squares and would prevent us putting a five in box five box eight sorry so that's not five that's not five by simple sudoku so that's five and that is telling us to put a nine in this square and that's moving the three and the five now are in a uh well they're sort of a pair in in box they are a pair yeah but again that logic was 
Yes, I could have got that logic, couldn't I? Because the moment I knocked five out of here, I could have taken three out, out of there immediately and forced that three five pair before I got this digit, but I just didn't see it that way. That's a five by Sudoku. So that's telling me this is a seven. Okay, that makes sense that, because that's just the corollary of this being a nine. Have we got all the fives in the puzzle? Very, very nearly. Where is... Oh, no, we haven't. No, well, we've got these, these, this X-Wing left. And I don't think anything there is actually... Um, is hitting these cells by Knight's move. So it must be something else that's going to resolve those. What about nine in, bot, in sort of column six? It's got to be in one of those, which means one of these two digits is a six now. And that's, well, it's that one actually, because we're six in this box by Sudoku stroke knights move trick jiggery pokery. Six is not there, six is not there, that six sees that one, that six, six sees that one, so six is in one of those, which means that's not six. That is six, therefore that is nine. And therefore, um, hmm. I don't know. I don't know what that means. So perhaps we've got to think about these digits. I'm not sure though. There could well be some very simple stuff. Yeah, look, nine is looking there by Knight's move. So nine is in one of these two squares, which means this square, which is indexing the nine in the row, is eight or nine only. And that's about as useful as a chocolate teapot, apparently. What about, uh, <laughs> I don't know, well, where should we look now? Uh, I've got nothing, I don't know what to look at. What do we have left to place in this column? We've got one, three, seven and nine. One, three, seven, and nine. So one of these is a one or a three. And one of these is a one or a three. That ah, uh, that square can't be seven or nine. So that is one or three. So this must be seven or nine by our entropy trick. Because otherwise, if this was one or three as well, we'd end up with two ones in this box. So that's seven or nine, which is telling us to put a one in one of those squares, which is telling us to put a one in one of these squares and that's okay there you go and that's a knight's move away from itself so that is one which means one yes which means we can place one in column three now because this one sees that square it sees that square so by it's got to go there which means that's a three that oh this three sees this one by knight's move so that's seven that's three that's three that's seven by sudoku And now we will, I don't know what we're going to do, but what are the, oh, we can do this. There's a nine here. Has that been available for ages? I think it might've been. Look, that's in the third column. So we can write that in. That's a two by Sudoku. So these, right, so these digits are seven, eight and nine. But for some reason, yes, this digit's fixed. It sees nine, it sees eight, so that must be seven. So these are an eight, nine pair. And I don't know what that's, do I know? No, I don't think I do know what the order is, but we've got a seven or a nine here. And that's, that's telling us about the one in this row. So there's a one in one of those two squares. So ones, we've got, we've got seven ones. So a similar, ones are quite similar to fives now in that I'm not sure how we're going to resolve them. Ah, uh, right. So we're going to have to think harder. Oh, oh here, here you go. Where's three in box two? It's got to go there. So now, oh, this is lovely. That's fine. So where is three in box in box three it's not there it's not there this three sees those two squares by by knight's move so it's there 
which means th oh that's great because now now where's three in box nine and by sudoku stroke knight's move it can't be here because it would be a knight's move away from itself it can't be there by sudoku so it is there so this is a one and that's that's telling us to put the nine over here which is telling us that's a seven which is telling us to put the one there and sort of the sudoku implications are being matched by the one five nine implications this now must be a high digit for our entropy rules um so that's got to be a seven eight or a nine which means the nine in this row is definitely in one of three places and it's not here because it would be a knight's move away from itself so now where is the nine in this column it's got to go there which means that's a seven which means this is not a seven there's a nine in one of those two and it can't be here by night's move so the, oh, this is it's brilliant it's quite brilliant two four eight uh there's a four in one of those two there's a four in one of those two again the night's move helps us so eight must be here which means this is nine this is nine this is eight uh, the nine indexes itself so we don't earn extra for this but the eight tells us that that's true that's now a two. Oh, and we could have got that sorry the moment i put the nine here i could have put the two here i just didn't see it that way so these are a four eight pair and in this column we've not put two six and seven in so let's pencil mark that and have a stare um that can't be six for two reasons there are two sixes looking at that that can't be two for one reason i'm not sure if there's uh, anything else looking at those these are two four and eight by sudoku so these have got to be seven and something six i think now what about yes that digit is an eight it sees two four it see, well it sees two there and it sees two fours so that's got to be eight this is a two four pair this a oh i've got a six seven pair in row eight that suddenly emerged so that's got to be a two by sudoku so two is in one of three places in column three but it's not here because of this two I've nearly done all my 159s. I just haven't done these. So I suspect these are doable and I've just missed a knight's move. Um, or. Oh, I don't know actually. I'm not sure. What about those digits? They're, oh, they're 4 and 8. So we can just do some Sudoku. So that's 4, that's 8. Let's carry on doing Sudoku. I mean, it's outrageous that James is making me do Sudoku in his Sudoku puzzle. That's two because of this. So that's eight. So that's eight, but that's four. Now, four can't be here because it would be a knight's move. So that's four. That's six. That's two. Unwinding all our pencil marks. That is a something. Three. And somehow or other we have to just unwind the bottom of this grid come on simon what's going on we've got five and seven here into those squares let's get rid of the corner pencil mark uh no that's still not done and we've got six and eight here. oh we can do the eight that's eight so that's six and therefore Oh no, <laughs> I don't know. Oh yes, I do. Yeah, it's the same sort of trick again. How could this be seven? If this is seven, neither of those squares can be seven because of the knight's move. So that's six. Oops, misclicked. That's six, that's seven, that's six. And that seven is not doing enough work. Oh dear, have I just have I just totally had a shank here? This must be obvious, otherwise I think I might have made an error. Because at first blush I can't see what is going to resolve these digits. Am I being I'm probably being incredibly obtuse. What's going on? Let's double click sevens. Are any sevens? looking at any of the pencil mark sevens in this grid no so it's not sevens that are going to help us are any twos looking at pencil mark twos in the grid no fours oh 
Yes. <laughs> that four is definitely looking at that digit. Oh, thank goodness for that. I was I was thinking I'd gone mad. Uh, so that's seven, that's five, that's five, that's three. So the last digits were these. Is that is that going to be correct then? Yes. That is fantastic. 300 people have solved that in three days. Wow. Do I like the puzzle? I certainly do. That is just, isn't that brilliant? That is absolutely brilliant, James. A discovery. You have discovered something that an awful lot of people are going to enjoy. How, what a wonderful thing, actually. Isn't that a wonderful thing? You think about all of the, all of the troubles in the world. But James Sinclair has discovered something that will give an awful lot of people a few minutes of pleasure. Um, I think that's brilliant. James, well done. That is stellar work. Let me know in the comments how you get on with the puzzle. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.